Over southern England, a strange floating vehicle has taken to the skies. Unlike the Zeppelins of the past, could this airship be the future of travel? We all know that planes are bad for the environment and to avoid the worst excesses of climate change, we need to fly less. But what if there was an alternative? We've come down to Bedford, north of London, to see if a very old idea might be able to do something new. We haven't seen airships in our skies since the days of the Hindenburg disaster, a German airship that caught fire in the skies over New Jersey and killed 35. Roar and a burst of flame. But new technology and using the inert gas helium is supposed to make it far safer. Airlander as an aircraft is using lighter than air technology, but we're using it in a different way. And we're using it in a way that allows us to produce less carbon emissions than fixed wing aircraft or rotary wing aircraft. In fact, we feel we can get to zero emissions faster than any other form of aviation. Lighter than air technology works by using a gas less dense than air to create buoyancy. Chinese lanterns and air balloons do this by heating air and earlier airships use hydrogen, a flammable gas that all too often ended in disaster. By using helium to provide a lift for the aircraft, our power levels are much lower, so the amount of fuel used is much lower, but also we'd fly at a lower altitude. So we have a combination effect, which allows us to have a much bigger impact on reducing carbon. But it goes much deeper than that. The whole aircraft is designed to be tolerant of things going wrong. But despite safety assurances, the development of Airlander hasn't been without some turbulence, like a crash in 2016 that it suffered in testing. A small thing happened which went wrong, which pushed us outside where, what we trained for, and the crew had to put the aircraft down safely, but in a way they didn't expect to. And in the end, we caused some damage to the aircraft, but nobody was injured. We learnt a huge amount from all the testing, and we've integrated all that learning into our future plans. Aviation is already a huge source of carbon dioxide, making up 2% of the global burden. Airlander says its ships emit 75% less emissions than regular flights, and it's reportedly working on electric engines to make it zero emissions, though some are sceptical. We don't believe that batteries are the way to go for our type of aircraft, but hydrogen fuel cells offer a level of efficiency and weight efficiency, which really could allow us to do zero emission flight within 10 years. The whole aviation industry is now very aware that they need to decarbonize. Many governments, many international organizations have set very aggressive targets it is a lot more environmentally friendly. Typically, it uses 75% fewer emissions than comparable fixed-wing aircraft in similar roles. The first commercially available airlander ships are expected to begin carrying customers in 2026, but I was lucky enough to get a sneak peek. The training simulator gives airship pilots a feel for the real thing, and I got to give it a whirl. You'll probably do better than some very experienced pilots. So, still in there, just climb in there. If you want to go somewhere fast, then you're not looking at this machine, yeah? But if you want sort of luxury travel, niche travel, uh, surveillance type work, uh, and a lot of military applications, this, in terms of efficiency, is, is streets ahead of anything else. Now, I'm not a pilot, but I could tell how different this was from a regular aeroplane. Gentle, powerful, and so much slower and less aggressive than from fixed wing flight. How close is something like that to the real thing? I feel at home in there, that's just like I did when, when I was doing for flying the real aircraft, it's just exactly like that. And I'm quite happy in there. I, I've, I've made myself airsick almost a couple of times. I've never been airsick in real life, but in there I have. Will you be involved in the, the flying of the airlander once it arrives? In, Try and keep it away. At some point, these ships might be used by the military or by governments, such as for ferrying around cargo or troops at low cost. But in the near future, it's luxury travellers that might provide the business that airlander is looking for. You have floor to ceiling windows, you have almost no noise or vibration. You've always got an aisle next to your seat. It's an entirely different experience. The first three Airlander aircraft have been reserved for luxury travel. We'll have 16 cabins, bars, restaurants and so on on board. Could obviously go anywhere to remote places that are inaccessible using any other form of transport. The North Pole might be a good destination, for example. It is very environmentally friendly. It causes very little disruption because it is so quiet. Because you lie very low, you will be able to see polar bears. The other customer at the moment is a Spanish airline, Air Nostrum, who 
are going to use the aircraft to move passengers 100 at a time on new and existing networks, replacing fixed wing aircraft and doing so in a way that is cost effective but also produces much less carbon. Our next step is we get to build a purpose-built facility to build the aircraft in. We complete the design and then the build of three test aircraft. Those aircraft then go through all the tests necessary to make sure that we've thoroughly worked everything out. We might not be quite there, but the airship's golden age could still be ahead of us. And unless we do something about reaching our climate goals, travelling to the North Pole, luxury or otherwise, may not matter if it simply isn't there to visit.